What's up, boozers? So today we're going to be reviewing Oculus, which was done in 2013. It was directed by Mike Flanagan, and he was also a co-writer along with Jeff Howard. They weren't really relevant until recently. They just had a Netflix horror film that just came out that got some really good reviews, and it was called Hush. Um, that'll be done in a different review. Never seen it. I have. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I was partial to this film because of Amy <coughs> Khan being in it, which is Karen, Karen Gillan. <coughs> She the plays hottest redhead on the planet. I mean, she really is. Who wouldn't do her? I'd do her. I'd do her. Uh, she plays Kaylee Russell. Uh, she's the older sister to Brenton. I think his name is Thwaites. Um, his character is Tim Russell. Thankfully, that's a much easier name to say than <laughs> fucking Thwaites. It also <laughs> co-stars Katie Sackhoff. Go ahead. As Marie Russell, which is the mother, the mom, Rory Cochran. Who is Alan Russell, the father. father. He's a fucking psychopath. Who's Rory Cochran, isn't he in something else? He's in uh, Supernatural. Yes, he is the father in the Supernatural. father in Supernatural. It also stars uh, Annalise Basso, who is the young Kaylee, and Garrett Ryan, who is the young Tim. When it first opens, you're seeing a memory, essentially, of Kaylee and Tim when they were younger. That Tim is going through to his final psychiatric exam in order to get released from a psychiatric hospital. Yes. Which is not as easy as one might think. Trust me. I know from experience. <laughs> this is 11 years prior that this flashback is from. So flash forward to the end of it and it's 21 year old Tim um, repeating what they told him he saw. And anyhow, once he's released... Um, He's greeted by his older sister, Kaylee. Essentially what happened is they had been in an incident in their family home, which resulted in the mother being murdered by their father. And then Tim ended up killing his father in self-defense. Right. Uh, in an attempt to exonerate her brother, Kaylee sets up an elaborate and seemingly foolproof method to prove once and for all that there's a cursed mirror. And that, that he was is innocent. That was the true transgressor of the destructive path. It blew my mind. First of all, to listen to Amy Pond speak in an American accent, it's really difficult <laughs> for someone with that thick of a British accent to pull off an American accent, but she was phenomenal. I thought she was Scottish. That's part of Britain. Becky needs to learn geography. I don't know my maps. <laughs> the movie is so intense from the very beginning until the very end. It's so fast-paced. They're speaking super quickly all the time. There's a timer set for everything they do in the movie to foolproof this plan that she has to liberate her brother of any accusations that he was responsible for the murder of his father. But because of this, it's almost hard to keep track of all the things that are going on because they're in and out of the future and the past and in and out of what is real and what is not real for fault of... The mirror for Fault of Insanity is unknown until the final part of the film. <laughs> Let me just she drew the last straw. <laughs> it's my last straw, fuckers. But there are moments in the film that make you cringe, like when she bites into that. Oh my gosh. It's so it awful. It just sounded and so then, juicy and delicious. <laughs> and then the moments where... They have no idea where one another is, but they're right in front of each other. It's so fascinating, and you have to pay so much attention. And you do have to pay And then attention. the ending comes, and I was crying. My mind was blown. A few things have been done before the, you know, generic, you know, crazy person, you know, eating weird things, pulling out all their teeth. We've all seen that in horror films before. But the actual story of it, I've never seen anything like that. And then I watched this again after I went to a rave with one of my friends. <laughs> and I'm lying on the bed, halfway passed out, having danced my pants off for the past eight and a half hours. And I turn pants back. Pants do come off. And she, you know, coming down from this horrendous trip, is in tears on the sofa, just liquid streaming down her face <laughs> as if she cannot cope with the ending of this movie it is phenomenal and so emotional 
and so mind blowing. You have to watch it. I enjoyed every aspect of that, minus the raving and tear streaming and <laughs> coming down from trips thing. Uh, I've seen it numerous times. The thing that I really liked about this movie was that there's really no jump scares. You know it's coming, and it's not gonna just like jump out and you know get you. It's gonna get you. I didn't even think about that. There are no jump scares. It's fantastic. You're still scared shitless. The people or thing in the mirror is horrifying. Absolutely horrifying. Every time you see it. I don't know what it is about them, but especially at the end, they're all like lined up in the house as they're staring out at you. Oh my god. Horrible. Horrible. And I love that you're constantly questioning. You're like, okay, I've got it now. This is definitely the mirrors taking over and you know, it's fucking with them and everything is just terrible. But then Every it goes back to reality and you And then you no go back to reality and you're like, wait, are they just fucking insane? And then you're sure again, like, oh, okay, this is this is absolutely how it's happening. You know, there's definitely the mirror involved and it's the mirror. It's going to be the mirror, blah, blah, blah. And then you don't know again. You really don't fucking know. And then as it goes on, it gets worse because it's not a matter of, is this what they're seeing or is it fake and they're just psychotic? Like, I, are they really going back in time? Are they actually older did they right. never grow up type of thing and it's all just happening as it's unfolding does she you know does she really have all this done the For way a movie that she that's says mainly dialogue it's insane how fast it is. is i also appreciated how much effort they put into the beginning when they first come into the house and they, she has everything all set up for this and the, the brother's apprehensive of of it all and he's not sure if she's, you know, flown off her rocker or because not. Because he's been conditioned to believe this is all part of his psychosis. And then she undoes all that. The amount of information that they put into that, like, two minutes that she's explaining it all in front of the camera about the mirror. Just, they put a lot of time <laughs> and mm. thought into this. That's, so that's what well I'm done. trying to say. I think it's fantastic. I don't have to have any booze in my system to enjoy this. Or drugs. Not necessary. <laughs> Not necessary. Not necessary. Else. However, we do like our drinks. Cheers. We got a little, little guy over here. So in the end, IMDb rated this a 6.5 out of 10. And I think that's an incredibly unfair uh, score for it. I am going to give it a 9 out of 10. I also give it a 9 out of 10. It was, it was a fantastic so good. movie. Not just the... Mm. As a horror aspect, because it will rock you through and through emotionally and psychologically every time you watch it. And you pick up on that extra things you every don't time find you do it. Film. It's yeah. fantastic. I think it was really well done. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so we'll see you guys next time and stay awesome and keep boozing. Salute there.